ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له السلام عليكم brothers the brothers are going to deliver a lecture. Can we have some silence, please? Baraklaw Fiko. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu ittaku allaha haqqa tuqatih. ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد We begin my dear and respected brothers and sisters in Islam, as we always begin by praising and exalting Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala with praises and exaltations that indeed only He is worthy of. And we begin, as we always begin, by sending His salawat and His salamat, His blessings and His peace upon the last and final messenger Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam wa ba'd Now ya ayyuhal ikhwan wa akhawat that your Lord and your Creator tabaraka wa ta'ala He reminds you in his noble book of his numerous gifts, favors, blessings. When he says, Jalla wa ala, wa in ta'uddu ni'mata Allahi la tuhsuha. If you were to enumerate the blessings of Allah, you will not be able to do so. The Mufassirun, they mention two explanations. The first explanation, if you were to physically sit down with your hand, with a pen, paper, tablet, phone, whatever tool you want to use, and you were to physically start counting the blessings of Allah upon you, you will not be able to reach the end. You will not be able to reach every aspect of your life in which Allah has blessed you, He has favored you. He has granted you something that He did not grant to someone else. The second explanation is based upon the first explanation. 
if you cannot possibly accurately count every blessing of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala that He has given you. Then it is not possible that you can fully thank Allah for every blessing that He has given you. Because if you recognize a simple affair to be a blessing of Allah, that recognition of that blessing of Allah is a blessing of Allah. If you recognize that Allah has blessed you with something, that recognition is a blessing from Allah. If you continue that, with thankfulness, then that thankfulness is a blessing of Allah. Hence, in you recognizing a single blessing of Allah and being thankful for a blessing of Allah, you have created another two blessings. Or Allah has blessed you with two more blessings. So undoubtedly, brothers and sisters, it is important to recognize the favors of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala upon us. And from the greatest blessings of Allah jalla wa ala is that He guided us to the religion of Islam. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala He says in Surah Al-Hujurat Yamunnuna alayka an aslamu Qul la tamunnu alayya islamakum Balillahu yamunnu alaykum an hadakum lil iman in kuntum sadiqeen يَمُنُّونَ عَلَيْكَ أَنْ أَسْلَمُوا They act as though they have done you a favor by accepting Islam. قُلْ لَا تَمُنُّوا عَلَيَّ إِسْلَامَكُمْ Say, do not act as though you have done me a favor by accepting Islam. بَلِ اللَّهُ يَمُنُّوا عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ هَدَاكُمْ لِلْإِيمَانِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ but it is Allah that has done you a favor by guiding you to iman when you were from amongst the sadiqeen, when you were from amongst the truthful. My Islam, my acceptance of Islam, and your acceptance of Islam is undoubtedly from the greatest blessings of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. This religion of Islam is from the greatest blessings of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. The unity that Islam provides, that Quran and Sunnah provides, that Allah has guided Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'atu, that Allah has guided Jama'atu Salafiyyin to, is a blessing from the blessings of Allah. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا Remember the blessing of Allah upon you. When you were enemies one to the other, فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ And he brought your hearts together. فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا And you became by the blessing of Allah like brothers. This religion is a blessing. The unity that comes from implementing this religion is a blessing.
And from the blessings of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, a blessing that no other nation and no other prophet received. As indeed one of the Jews, they came to Umar ibn Khattab, رضي الله تعالى عنه, and they said, آية في كتابكم تقرؤونها لو نزلت علينا معشر اليهود لا أخذنا ذلك اليوم عيدا. There is a verse in your book that you recite. If that verse was revealed upon us, the Jews, we would have taken that day as a day of celebration. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Wa ayyu ayah? Which verse? He said, Al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, wa raditu lakum al islam deena. Al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. This day I have completed my favor upon you. Perfected the religion for you. وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا Again, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala in this ayah refers to the religion of Islam as His blessing. But then, يَا أَيُّهَا الْإِخْوَانُ وَأَخَوَاتُ there are obligations that must be completed. When Allah blesses you with something, in every blessing that Allah has given you, part of being thankful to Allah for that blessing is completing the requirements of that blessing. Spending that blessing in a manner which is pleasing to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And as for the obligation in this religion that Allah has blessed you and I with, is that we have not been given a choice to take a portion of it and to leave portions of it. We do not pick and choose which verses, which chapters, which adza we want to believe in and which ones we want to reject, which ones we want to implement, which ones we want to ignore and disobey. Because your Lord, tabaraka wa ta'ala, he has ordered you. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu udkhulu fi silmi kaffa wa la tattabi'u khutuwat ash-shaytan innahu lakum aduwwun mubeen. In Surah Al-Baqarah our Lord Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala summons you by the characteristic of iman, Allah is summoning you <coughs> Allah is summoning you with the best of your characteristics. Allah is summoning you by that characteristic by whose strength a person's level is raised in the hereafter. So the intent, ya ikhwan, is that when Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, pay attention to what is coming after it. Because what's going to come after it, as Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen, rahimahullah, he explains, 
is going to be one of two things. Either an order that you must implement or a prohibition that you must refrain from. And both of them are from the requirements of your iman. So your failure to act upon whatever order or prohibition comes after this statement, Ya أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ amanu will cause either the strengthening of your iman, the increasing of your iman, or the decreasing of your iman, or the weakening of your iman. So if a teacher, he says a statement that he wants the students to learn, and he says it simply without summoning anyone, stands in front of his classroom, stands in front of his students, and he teaches them an ayah. And he says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَهَدٌ But if the teacher comes and he says, Ya fulan wa fulan isma'u. Such a such student, such a such student. Or Ya yuhatullab. Students, listen. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. The second manner, without a doubt, is a more befitting manner to educate, to teach. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, O you who believe, what is the order? Udkhulu fi silmi kaffa. Enter into Islam completely. Wa la tattabi'u khutuwat shaytan And do not follow the footsteps of shaytan. إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُّبِينٌ Indeed, he is a clear enemy to you. This is similar to the statement of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. مَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَبَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ it is not for the believing man nor the believing woman. إِذَا قَضَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا If Allah and His Messenger have decreed an affair, if they have judged in an affair, or if they have ruled by a certain affair, أَن يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ Then they do not have a choice in that affair. This is the characteristic of the Muslim, ya ikhwan. Is that we say, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We hear and we obey. As for the latter, the choosing, what am I in agreement with? What is easy for me? What is difficult for me? What do I not like? What can I not implement? choosing and picking, then this is from the habits of the Jews. As our Lord, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He says regarding them, أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ Do you believe in a portion of the book and you disbelieve in another portion? فَمَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ يَفْعَلُ ذَلِكَ مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا خِزْيٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا So what is the compensation of the one who does that? Except that they are lost in this life. وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ أَشَدِّ الْأَذَابِ And on the day of resurrection, they will be returned to a severe torment. 
اولئك الذين اولئك الذين اشتروا الحياه الدنيا بالاخره these are the ones that have bought the life of this world with the life of the hereafter meaning they use the life in the hereafter as currency to pay for the life of this world and this qissa ya ikhwan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions regarding them. وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَكُمْ لَا تَسْفِكُونَ دِمَاءَكُمْ وَلَا تُخْرِجُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ ثُمَّ أَقْرَرْتُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَشْهَدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَكُمْ when we took the promise from you, the covenant from you. لا تسفكون دماءكم That you will not spill your own, your own blood. ولا تخرجون أنفسكم من دياركم And you will not exit your own selves or a portion of your own selves from their homes, from their abodes. ثم أقررتم وأنتم تشهدون And then... You are in agreement with this. And you bear witness to this. ثُمَّ أَنْتُمْ هَاُولَاءِ تَقُتُلُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ Then you, the same people that agreed, that bear witness, they agree and they bear witness that it was disallowed for them to kill each other that it was disallowed for them to exit, to throw someone or exit someone out of their own homes. ثُمَّ أَنْتُمْ هَؤُلَاءِ تَقُتُلُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ You then started to kill your own selves. وَتُخْرِجُونَ فَرِيقًا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ and you would exit, forcibly remove a portion of your people from their own abodes, from their own houses. تَظَاهَرُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِالْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ Dealing with them in sin and transgression. وَإِن يَأْتُوكُمْ أُسَارَا تُفَادُوهُمْ But if they came to you as if they came to you as captives of war, tufaduhum, then you were ready to ransom them. Then you were ready to ransom them. وَهُوَ مُحَرَّمٌ عَلَيْكُمْ إِخْرَاجُهُمْ But to fight, the, to remove them from their homes, aslan, was haram for you. Meaning what? They chose what to implement and what not to implement. Allah gave them the legislation that they were not to fight each other and kill each other. And this is pertaining to the tribes of al Madina. There was three tribes in Medina. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he mentions three tribes in Medina. And when the idolaters, the pagans, when they used to fight each other, these, the Jews, they would take sides. Which would cause the Jews to kill each other. And Allah prohibited this upon them in their book. So they chose to disobey. This aspect of their book, they chose to disobey. But when these very people that they exited by force. And they were not allowed to exit them by force. When they would return to them as captives, now they want to follow their book. So now they want to ransom them off. Because now, it agrees with them. So they picked. And they would choose what would match their desires. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding them, أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ Do you believe in the portion, in a portion of the book and disbelieve in another portion? This was their characteristic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says further in Surah Al-Baqarah, كُلَّمَا جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ بِمَا لَا تَحْوَىٰ أَنفُسُكُمْ مُسْتَكْبَرْتُمْ كُلَّمَا جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ بِمَا لَا تَحْوَىٰ أَنفُسُكُمْ إِسْتَكْبَرْتُمْ Every time a messenger came to you, بِمَا لَا تَحْوَىٰ أَنفُسُكُمْ With what you, your own selves, did not desire. With what you did not desire. إِسْتَكْبَرْتُمْ You filled up with pride. فَفَرِيقًا كَذَّبْتُمْ وَفَرِيقًا تَقْتُلُونَ A portion of them you would be lie. This would be the least of what they would do to the prophets and messengers when they would come to Bani Israel. The least of what they would do is be lie them. You are lying. Allah did not reveal anything. You have not come with anything. You are a liar. But this was the least. If they were capable of murdering them, they would murder them. وَفَرِيقًا تَقْتُلُونَ This, ya ikhwan, is an issue with the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam today. We pick and we choose. Where is it that we will apply the religion? Where is it that we will look for guidance from the religion? And what is it that we are ready to ignore? What is it that does not match our desires, what we want? It does not match it. So we are ready to ignore it. Or say that it does not apply to us today. So instead of making the Qur'an and the Sunnah the measuring tool for every single one of our affairs, we have made our desires the measuring tool of what we will accept and what we will reject. And in every group, party, sect, from amongst Ahlul Bid'ah, you find this aspect. That they pick and they choose what matches their desires, and they act upon that. And they leave off what does not match their desires or what they dislike. Forgetting that it may be that you dislike something, but in that is good for you. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُكْرِهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ You may dislike something, but in that, dislike, in that affair that you dislike, there is benefit for you. There is benefit for you in that affair. So you look at the firqa, ikhwanul muslimin today. And they are ready to say and repeat the ayah, in hukmu illa lillah is not the order, is not the ruling only for Allah. They're ready to say that we want to establish an Islamic state. And this is our goal. 
So they are ready to accept this portion. But are they ready to accept the methodology which was followed by the prophets and messengers to establish that goal? Are they ready to accept that that is not the goal in itself? But rather that is the result of attaining the goal of the worship of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And that was the reason that the prophets and messengers alayhim salatu was salam were sent. That was the reason that revelation was revealed. That was the reason that the heavens and the earth were created for the worship of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala alone and without any partners. But they are ready to ignore this aspect. It does not concern them. Because it does not match their desires. It does not match the end result that they want to see. So they are ready to ignore that in the lands in which they are ready to come out onto the streets and overthrow and cause havoc and chaos and destruction and killing and murder. It does not bother them that around the corner from their house, Badawi is worshipped. Or Al-Hassan and al Hussein are worshipped. This does not bother them. Because they have quite, adequ- quite adequately for their own goals, ignored that portion of the religion. It does not match their desires. And such is the case with Jama'atul Tabligh. That they are ready to say, yes, it is time to give da'wah. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ You are the best of mankind. Raised up for them. This is the correct explanation. Raised up for mankind. They say, sent out for mankind. You order that which is good, you forbid that which is evil, and you believe in Allah. So this means that we are ready to gather and go out for 30 days and 40 days and 4 months and 5 months and 40 years to give da'wah. But all the steps that precede that in the Qur'an and the sunnah, they are ready to reject that. Why? It does not match their desires. This is the farq. This is the difference between the Salafi And the mubtada'ah. This is our difference. We take the religion completely. Not leaving any portion of it. And we do not take it and put it on a scale. To weigh it with something else. We do not say yes this is Quran and Sunnah. But this is my desires. Let's see which one is weightier. Yes, this is what the Qur'an and Sunnah has ordered us to do. But this is what my imam tells me to do. Let's see which one is heavier. Which one do I agree with? Yes, this is what Qur'an and Sunnah says. But this is not what my people do. So let's see which one can we choose. Our hal is that in every problem, in every situation, big or small, whether we as Salafis are dealing with the youngest of our children, or we are dealing with the problems of the entire ummah, we do not let our emotions carry us away. We do not let our intellects carry us away. We do not allow our feelings to carry us away. We do not allow our desires to carry us away. We do not allow different madahib to carry us away or different firaq to carry us away. But rather we stand firm upon kitab and sunnah and we say that we look for the cure in kitab and sunnah. Whether it is difficult for us or it is easy for us. 
Whether we see the solution in it, or we do not see the solution in it. We are from the people of Qur'an. Our cures are found in the ayat of the Qur'an. Our cures are found in the ahadith of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our cures are found in the understanding of the Sahaba. Our cures are found in the writings of those a'immah that followed them. This is our tool that we use. Today, when they come, those that are ready, and ironically, those that are ready to spill blood in the different Muslim lands, and ironically, many of them are not in those Muslim lands. They are in other lands, but they are ready for them to spill their blood. When you say to them, that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this situation, He has ordered with patience, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبَرِ وَالصَّلَاحِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ And seek aid through patience and salah. You do not have the capability, nor are you in the right. They are not ready to accept that portion. But they are quick to say, that أَنْتُمُ salafiyun, You don't want the hukam of Allah. Rather it is you who doesn't want the hukam of Allah. You only want the hukam of Allah when it is befitting to your own desires. When it matches your desires, then you are ready to turn to the verses of the book of Allah. But when it is in disagreement, you will not attain your personal goals, then you are ready to discard it. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala He says regarding these people Surah Al-Qasas فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ فَأَلَمْ أَنَّمَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ This is the reality. That they choose between their own desires. Hence, they are referred to as أَهْلُ الْأَهْوَاءَ The people of desires. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says regarding them, فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ فَأَلَمْ أَنَّمَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ And if they do not follow you, then know that they are indeed following their own desires. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He says, وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ مِمَّنْ اتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ بِغَيْرِ هُدًا مِنَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ And who is more astray than the one who follows his desires without guidance from Allah? And indeed Allah does not guide an oppressive people. And Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Furqan, أَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَاهُ أَفَأَنْتَ تَكُونُ عَلَيْهِ وَكِيلًا Have you seen the one who has taken his own desires as his deity? How? Because indeed, the affair of legislating a sharia, the affair of legislating is an affair which is specific only to Rabbul Alameen. 
And these individuals have legislated for themselves manahij. Methodologies that are foreign to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And because their methodologies are foreign to the Qur'an and the Sunnah, you will find that these individuals, these groups and these parties are always failing at their goals. Look at, look at the reality of Ikhwanul Muslimin. How much blood they had spilled and how many different countries. How many mothers lost their sons? How many wives lost their husbands? How many children lost their fathers? And to what goal? So you find that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala disgraces them. That they are looked down upon on the face of the earth. That they are degraded on the face of the earth. Because they have chosen from the religion what suits their desires and they have rejected what suits, what does not suit their desires. And then Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Jathiyah, ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاكَ عَلَى شَرِيعَةٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْرِ فَاتَّبِعْهَا وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And then, when we have made you or placed you upon a shari'ah in this affair, then follow that shari'ah. وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ and do not follow the desires of those that do not know. If it was befitting, listen to this, if it was befitting, for anyone's desires to be included as a portion of the religion. If anyone had a right, if it can be fathomed that someone's desires can be made a portion of the religion, then who can we say other than Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rasulullah khatimul anbiya'i wal mursaleen the last of the prophets and the messengers but even the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even His desires are not the basis of the religion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, what? وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى He does not speak from His own desires. If Nabiullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the affairs of the religion, in the affairs of the deen. He could not speak from his own desires. In huwa illa wahyun yuha. It is nothing more than revelation revealed. Then what of other than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Can it be imagined that this religion be established upon ideologies created by those particular founders of those groups? 
So the ideology of Hassan al-Banna, Sayyid Qutb, can these be made the basis of religious reformation? Or Muhammad Ilyas of Jama'at al-Tabliq, can the dreams that he received sitting at the sides of graves be made for the basis of our religion? When even the desires of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, even those are not the basis of the religion. ما يمتقوان الهوى He doesn't speak of his own accord. إن هو إلا وحي يوحى It is only revelation revealed. So this religion is not based upon the desires of any individual, of any person, of any group, of any party. But rather it is established upon Qur'an and upon Sunnah. Not only in its goals. The end does not justify the means. Fahimtum. The end does not justify the means. If that was the case, then Islam would have legislated the placement of a sword on every man's neck, forcing them to accept Islam. And keeping it there until they forget about their kufr. And this is not what Islam has legislated. This is not what Islam has legislated. But rather, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has said, La ikraha fi deen. There is no forcing in the religion. You do not force Islam at the edge of the sword or at the end of the barrel of a gun. Listen, Ya Ikhwan. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala He ordered even his prophet Dawood alayhi salam And he said Ya Dawood Inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ard Fahkum bayna al-nasi bilhaq Wala tattabi al-hawa Fayudillaka an sabilillah إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَضِلُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ بِمَا نَسُوا يَوْمَ الْحِسَابِ O Dawood, indeed we have made you a khalifa upon the earth. فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِالْحَقِّ Judge amongst the people with the truth. وَلَا تَتَّبِعِ الْحَوَى And do not follow desires do not follow desires fayudillaka an sabilillah it will lead you astray from the path of allah inna alladhina yadilluna an sabilillah lahum adhabun shadid those that astray those that stray from the path of allah for them is a severe punishment because of their forgetting of the day of hisab the day of compensation And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds us that Jannah is for those that prohibit themselves from their desires. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَ النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَ النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى And for thee, who remembers that he will stand in front of his Lord, 
So he prevents himself from his desires. فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Jannah will be his abode. Jannah will be his abode. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith narrated by Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that indeed there will come a people from my nation through whom desires will, desires will run through whom desires will run like rabies runs through the dogs. In every verse, in every hadith, we find a prohibition of entering our desires, what we deem to be appropriate. what we deem to be appropriate, what we deem to be befitting, and making that our religion. For this reason, ya ikhwan, Allahu yubarak fikum. When you find a people entering in, and we will end inshallah on this note, and continue tomorrow. When you find a people Entering into their religion, the desires of their own souls, and extracting from those desires the methodologies that they want to follow. This is the reality of these groups and parties. then you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He removes from them the legislated means of attaining that goal. Fahimtum? Sabil al-Mithal. Let's give an example. We'll give two examples. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every goal, there is a means. For every end result, which is legislated, there is a means of attaining that. Something previous to it that needs to be completed. So indeed, we'll use Jamatu Tabligh as an example. They make it this easy. They say, we want to give da'wah to Allah. This is our goal. We want to give da'wah to Allah. We want to call the people to Allah. So hence we gather the people together for a day, for a week, for 40 days, for 4 months, for 40 years. And we take them out to give da'wah. So what is wrong with this? Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has ordered us to give da'wah. كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ للناس تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ You are the best of mankind. The best of nations raised up for mankind. You order what is good and you forbid what is evil. خلاص, this is what we are doing. And we say, نعم. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has legislated. Calling to Him. Giving da'wah to the Qur'an and the Sunnah calling the people to Iman, calling the people to Islam. 
But Allah has legislated previous to that means that you have removed and replaced with your own desires or the desires of your founder Muhammad Ilyas or the desires of whatever shaitan was sending him wahi. Because the wahi of Allah stopped with the death of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa That wahi that Muhammad Ilyas believes he got sitting at the grave or after sitting at his grave and sleeping, that wahi stopped with the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when you remove the means which Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has legislated before giving da'wah, which is talabul ilm. وَالْعَسَرْ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ By time, indeed, mankind is in loss, except those who believe. And these are verses that have been studied in our masajid, regardless of what area in the world you find the Salafi masjid. This surah is read. It is explained thoroughly. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يَعْنِي طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And do righteous good deeds. وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْحَقِّ Then da'wah. How have you skipped step one, step two, and gone straight to step three? So now what do you find in them? They've removed طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ They've replaced that with being ignorant. And taking the ignorant out to give da'wah. So you find that because of their bid'ah, Allah has removed from them talabul ilm. They have no raghba in talabul ilm. True qissa. True qissa. When we return to Jersey, to New Jersey in the States, and in the area which we were in, you had a high influx of two groups that would call the Muslims to their bid'at. You would have Jamaatul Tabliq, or three groups. Jamaatul Tabliq and the Brailvis. So we, walhamdulillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala, as the Salafis, we would warn from both of these groups. The Brailvis and the Tabliqis. So, one day, there were about four or five tabligis who caught myself and a brother by ourselves. They said, we want to speak to you. I said, okay, khalas, let's speak. And we went through this, which I just presented to the brothers. And one of them said with a lot of emotion, he said, this is a lie. I have been seeking knowledge with Jama'at al-Tabligh for the past 25 years. When we go out, we seek knowledge. He said, MashaAllah. Tayyib, what do you call to? Our da'wah is to La ilaha illallah. MashaAllah. Jayyid, can you tell me the meaning of La ilaha illallah? Well, the meaning of La ilaha illallah is that Allah created us and He provides for us. Allahu Akbar. 25 years with Jamaat Tabligh and you have less knowledge of the meaning of La ilaha illallah than Abu Jahl had. You understand La ilaha illallah less than Abu Lahab understood it. The same is the case, for example, this group in Syria and Iraq, whatever their name is today, because they change their name every week. They say that our goal is the establishment of the Khilafah. That is not our goal. The one that says, as Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi, rahimahullah, said the one who says that our goal 
is the establishment of an Islamic state, the establishment of the Khilafah, then this one is from the is from the people of Bid'ah. He is from Ahlul Bid'ah. Our goal is the goal of the prophets and the messengers. وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَا يَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ It was revealed to you and those that came before you that if you commit shirk, your actions will be wiped out and you will be from the losers. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولَ أَنْ نِعْبُضُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ And we did not send a messenger before you except that we revealed to them there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah and stay away from the taghut. This is our goal. The worship of Allah alone and without any partners. But khalas, we know by the establishment of this is how we return to ruling by the book of Allah. By establishing the call to tawheed is how you attain that. How Allah blesses you with that. Look at their hal. For this goal of theirs, they have left off what Allah has legislated. And they have taken in their hands the overthrowing of Muslim rulers, the causing of havoc and chaos in Muslim lands, killing, murdering large masses of people. By Allah, by Allah, that goal is not attained in this manner. But it is attained as Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. He says, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلِفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَا يُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمْ الَّذِي اِرْتَضَى لَهُمْ وَلَا يُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنَا يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِشَيْئًا Allah promises those from amongst you that believe and do righteous good deeds, He will make them the khulafa of this earth as He did for those that came before them. He will establish for them the religion with which He is pleased. And he will change their state of fear to a state of peace. الواحد, with one condition. That you worship me, you do not associate any partners with me. Allahu Akbar. By taking upon themselves their own innovated ways, Allah has caused them to leave that one call which leads to the rule of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. The call to a tawheed. By following their desires, Allah removes the likeness of that from the sunnah. Shara ta'ala, as the hour is late, I'm not sure what late is here, for us it's late. We will suffice with this insha'Allah. We will continue bi-ithnillahi ta'ala tomorrow. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wallahu yibarik fikum.